action from the East Bracket coming to you from Tampa, Florida. The number 10 seed, Auburn, taking on the number two seed, Wake Forest. And we are ready for action from the St. Pete Times Forum. Winner here will move on to the Sweet 16 in Albany to take on the winner of the Syracuse-Oklahoma State matchup. Starting lineups for Auburn, Daniels, Killingsworth, Davis, Bird, and Monroe. Wake Forest with Levy, Danilus, Williams, Howard, and Downey. The officiating crew, Ted Hillary, Steve Wellmer, and Tony Green. Ian Eagle, Jim Spinarkle, Darren Horton with you. Two teams that struggled in their early round matchup. Both were pushed to the ultimate test in their first round victories, respectively, as Wake Forest controls the tip. Howard had it partially blocked at a foul called Derek Bird there defensively. Cliff Ellis, now in his ninth year at Auburn, 28th year overall. His team earned a 65-63 win in overtime over St. Joseph's on Friday. And Howard will shoot a pair at the free throw line, the All-American. The big test, I think, today, Ian, is that both of these teams recognize the front line is going to be so important for both of these teams. Obviously, Wake Forest, the number one team in the nation with rebounding. Auburn with a very good lineup up front also. And Skip Prosser's team coming off a 76-73 win over East Tennessee State. They held on at the bitter end to get the victory behind a career high 20 points from the freshman Eric Williams. Wake Forest showing a little different look here than they did the other day. A 1-2-2 two, two to start things off. There'll be a focus on this guy Daniels for sure. Kick out. Bird a three. Off the rim, no, and Downey tracks down the loose ball for Wake. First set defensively, Bird picked up that initial foul, so we'll see how that plays out. He's got Daniels right now. And the loose was held in check in the first round game. And Wake with a 2-0 lead. Downey being guarded by Sanders. Inside, it's knocked around, Monroe's got it. Lewis Monroe handles the basketball, only had one turnover in the first round victory against St. Joe's. Bird way outside. Daniels will stroke it for three. And Auburn still looking for its first points. And most people, I think, coming into this basketball game would have thought that Howard and Dan Daniels would have been playing one another. They're not. Going to try to keep one another away from the foul problems. Each coach worried about that. Now on the dash, Williams the easy finish, and it was set up nicely by the ACC Player of the Year, Howard. And Williams with a huge game the other day with 20 points. They really found him. He was great down low with his footwork to establish another example of that to start things off and going right at the basket. Here's Daniels facing the double baseline drive, reverse delivery, and a pretty move underneath by Marquise Daniels for Auburn. So many different skills, Ian, with the way he can play the game. We saw him against St. Joe's with the long-range shots going to the basket. Very effective at the slash. Even that way along the baseline, he's effective. Steal attempt by big Kyle Davis. Now it's five on four. Davis trying to recover. He does. Matched up against Danilus. Ball fake. Danilus forced to give it up. Downey had the touch in the first round from three-point territory. And Downey knocks it down. He was five of eight from long distance on Friday. Most of that came against a 1-3-1 zone also. So from the man-to-man, -man, that little rotation by Davis, the, the steal attempt, Caused some problems, and all of a sudden, as you touched on, it was five on four. They had an advantage. 7-2, Wake. Killingsworth thought about it. Here's Daniels. Downey picks him up. 2-3 look right now for Wake Forest. Inside, the entry pass is intercepted by Williams. Wake looking to run with Downey. Levy puts it on the floor for a pull-up jump. Air ball. Out of bounds, and Auburn's got it. Might have been a deflection, though. I thought it might have been a foul call also. Wake's going to hold on to it. And here's that skip pass to Downey, boy. And he's been really on fire, as you just touched on. What he's doing very well, though, is he's tracking the basketball and paying attention. That's a good note call right there. Howard, miscommunication. Danilus thought Howard was going to launch the jump shot. Demon Deacons lead 7-2, three minutes elapsed here in the first half. A lot of people didn't think Auburn belonged in this tournament. They proved those people wrong with their win in overtime. 
And speaking to Cliff Ellis before the game, he just said, hey, we got to come out and play relaxed and have some fun. It's a short period of time, so enjoy it and just get yourself loose early. Daniels, high arcing delivery doesn't go. It's rebounded by Howard. Pretty good off the glass, Wake Forest. Let's see if Auburn can get some offensive chances. Howard, pull up, jump. Wake Forest, number one in the country in rebounding and able to push it off the board. Keep in mind, if Howard is on his A game, Wake Forest is very, very difficult, but he puts up numbers all across the board with points and rebounds, assists, steals. He does it all. Jump shot doesn't go for Bird. Offensive rebound. Daniels, gorgeous move on the interior. You see where that second chance comes in. He gets that long rebound to kick his way. A lot of shots, 75% of the shots that are missed will kick to the opposite side of the floor. He was really in good position. Second field goal for Daniels. Offensive foul against Teron Downey. It was Monroe who took the hit. A pretty good stay defensively. Skip Prosser not happy with the call, but it's going to go the other way. One of the things to look for with Auburn, let's see if they can take advantage of some of their big guys down low. In particular, Killingsworth, get him a touch on the blocks a little bit. Settling outside shots a few times. Here we go. Killingsworth leaning in with a left hand. Marco Killingsworth. You have to remember he's a left-handed player, so you have to force him right as much as you can. Nice little drive, though, and a good, smart play to get him the ball. Apparently somebody's paying attention to you. <laughs> Not you, I guess, though. <laughs> Williams had it blocked. Levy, the chippy on the inside. So this game, I think the winner is clearly going to establish themselves down on the blocks, both at the offensive and defensive end. Monroe gets it across for Daniels. And 11-6, Wake Forest lead. Bird steps into a long one. In and out. Killingsworth offensive rebound. Everybody talks about the rebounding of Wake Forest. Don't cut these guys short. The Tigers know how to go after the basketball. A Bird. good ball fake. Here's Bird. Gets clobbered by Williams, who is foul prone. The freshman from North Carolina. He made it five minutes without a foul just then, but one of the things that they have to do is watch the challenge. A little late stepping in. It's the correct call from the officials. A, he gets him with the body moving. B, he gets him with the arms flailing up top. Williams has to be very careful, Ian, because they need his minutes today. The only time they want to take him mm -hmm. out of this game is when Skip Prosser wants to take him out, not because he has to take him out. Bird who hit a couple of big free throws in Friday's victory. Shooting it at 80% from Ypsilanti, Michigan. Eleven seven. Wake with the lead. Five minutes gone by and Auburn within three. Now for a CBS News special report. Let's go to Dan Rather in New York. Dan Rather here with new developments in the war. With the 101st Airborne now only about 100 miles away, Baghdad is again burning. Another airstrike over the Iraqi capital targets damage and casualties unknown, but it is one of the heaviest bombardments so far. U.S. troops, especially Marines, take dozens of casualties near the southern town of Anazaria. Guerrilla forces dressed in plain clothes and carrying automatic weapons ambush them in a two-hour bloody battle. We go to the Pentagon, where CBS's David Martin has news about casualties and a leapfrog troop movement. It now appears that the U.S. has suffered between 10 and 15 dead and 12 missing in the fighting around An Nazaria. But the lead elements of the invasion force are considerably farther to the north. An, a uh, unit of the 101st Airborne Division has leapfrog over what was the lead division, the 3rd Infantry Division, and is now, uh, by some estimates, uh, as close to Baghdad as just 100 miles south of the city. Stay with CBS for war coverage. We break news and we break in when any important news breaks out. Greg Gumbel in New York. Let's give you an update on what's happening. Oklahoma State, which has led most of the day, now finds itself trailing Syracuse and on the tail end of this play. Billy Edlin on the baseline, finishing off a 7-2 Syracuse run. The Orange men now with a nine-point lead on Oklahoma State as they come up on 345 to play. Let's get you back to Tampa. Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Five minutes gone by in the first half from Tampa, the number two seed in the East. Wake Forest leading 10th seeded Auburn 11 to 8. 
Wake looked vulnerable in their first round victory over 15th seed East Tennessee State. Meanwhile, Auburn had a dominant first half against St. Joseph's on Friday. Things flip-flopped in the second half. They were able to pull it out behind Marquise Daniels getting big points in the regulation and in overtime. Let's take a look at the Pontiac high performance of the day. It's Brandon Knight. Pittsburgh with a win over Indiana, and the point guard had 17 points, 7 assists, 74-52 the final in Boston. For more great performances as they happen, go to NCAAsports.com. Pitt, a backcourt-driven team with Knight and Page, but they're strong up front. They defend well, and that's why a lot of people think they'll advance pretty far into the tournament because of that combination of rebounding and strong, solid defense. Wake Forest able to handle the pressure of Auburn. And Downey running the show for the Demon Deacons. Daniels and Howard is the matchup now at this end of the floor. It'll be interesting to see if Howard goes at Daniels to try to pick up a foul at some point. Here's Williams. Turnaround jump. Off the mark, and Killingsworth tips the ball to himself. And Cliff Ellis said to me before this game, I, if we can get him out on the floor shooting shots like that, we'll be in pretty good shape, at least from the post. Killingsworth gives up his dribble. Bird comes to the ball. And I'm sure Skip Frosser wants Williams a little closer to the basket than the other end of the floor. Monroe up top. Davis trying to get involved offensively. And a push. Who got him? That's the quick question right here that has to be answered. If it's Williams, it's number two. And, and it's Williams. Watch they surround the lob pass down deep. It goes into the post. And Danilus comes in to help out. Williams also with the second guy coming in and bang to the floor. Coming off a career high 20 point performance in the win on Friday. And he was unstoppable at times in that first half before getting into a little bit of foul trouble in the second half, ultimately fouling out. Daniels, post move. Robinson just checked in. Howard through his legs. Robinson hits the deck and gets a piece of it. Wake Forest running five on four. Howard, the leaner. Bank shot, no. And a whistle inside. You know, and just to continue with your point with Williams on the fouls, I mean, it's not, you know, he's fouled out of five games this year, and he's had 13 times this season where he's had four fouls also. So clearly Skip, Skip Prosser knew that going in, that he was going to have some problems with him. And I thought because he played so well in that first game that there'd be like an anxiety attack mm -hmm. almost. The enthusiasm, the energy would be there, and you pick up that needless foul just like that. So it's unfortunate for him. He's going to be there for a while, though. Brandon Robinson, the personal foul, as Howard gets another shot of the free throw line. He's got five points, two rebounds. Howard coming off a 12-point, 13-rebound performance, but has not been on top of his game on the offensive end in recent weeks. Yeah, Skip Prosser basically just said, yeah, he's been off a couple of games. What can you do? Mm -hmm. I mean, and he said, what am I going to do? You know, yell at the guy? There's nothing you can do. He's the best player on the team. You just let him play his way out of it. Well, he told us people don't realize Howard doesn't get dressed in a phone booth. <laughs> he's <right>. human. <laughs> exactly. Wake Forest has been able to get out on the break, leading transition points. 6 nothing, and leading this game 13-8. Here's Monroe against Downey behind the back with the dribble. Let's see if Auburn continues to attack down low, especially without Williams, an extra body in there, even though Ellis is a pretty big guy himself. Justin Gray in the game for Wake. Here's Bird. Good defense from Howard. Shot clock at four. Daniels takes a peek at it. Inside the arc. Side rim, and it's rebounded by Gray. Kind of settling from the outside. Auburn not looking to challenge down low at all right now. Here's Downey setting things up. Wake is four of seven from the field. Downey loses a three. A lot of spin on it. Knocked to the outside. Controlled by Downey. Gray pump fake. Towards the rim for a floater. Well, Ellis was a factor on the offensive glass. He triggered it and allowed the ball to come back to Wake Forest. Good job just now getting it to the middle of the floor with Robinson against the 1-2-2. Two, two. Good work there by Auburn with Daniels finishing it off. Great pass to the middle. Whenever you want to get down the court in a hurry against a trap, full court, just skip it right to the middle and then turn and go with it. Marquise Daniels averaging 18.1 points per game. He's got six in the early going here. You just get the sense that Howard and Daniels are going to be involved and they better step up all afternoon. It looks like both of them really want the basketball. 
Howard will stroke it for three. No good. And it angled over the backboard. Out of bounds. Auburn ball. Here comes Gray. Watch a little ball fake, and then he's going to find his way into traffic, and then that pull-up jump shot. Many guys have troubles making those decisions, especially when they get closer to the basket. Good little decision there, though. And a good in-between game for Justin Gray. Freshman had 11 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds in his first-ever NCAA tournament game. But he shot a 2 for 16 from the field. You and I were looking at each other. We couldn't believe exactly. the numbers. 1 for 9 from 3-point range also. You know, a young kid, I would have stopped shooting at 2 for 10, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not, though. <laughs> Davis Good fires cut. inside. Here's Bird. Playing bigger than he is, Derek Bird willing to go to the interior, and he's got four points. Plus the ability of Davis to step out as a tall player and look over the defenders. Long three. It's Gray. Cans it from long distance. See, he must have heard you now listen to you talking about him <laughs> being two for 16 last game. This trap again. Looks to see if they can get to the middle of the floor. Nathan Watson is coming to the game. And a kick ball. They'll reset the shot clock. After this break, 11.27 to go, first half. Number two seed in the East, Wake Forest, leading 10th seed at Auburn by six. 4.8 seconds remain. One last try for the Bruins of UCLA to get into the Sweet 16. Knocked out last year in the first round by Tulsa. They don't want to lose this one. Edney going the distance. Polenta cake sounds good. Oh, but polenta sometimes makes me break out. Mm, I will get oh, a vegan club sandwich. Mm, vegans are like so in. Is the salmon East Coast or West Coast? That'll just do a number on me. I can come back I later. Crab cakes. Oh, I had crab cakes. <coughs> Sir? Porterhouse. Medium. Rare. Slaw. Cobb. Ranch. Blue. Fries. Bake. Toppings. All of them. Oh, here's something. Coconut dipped shrimp saute with pilaf. I like pilaf. Come on, you can do it. Just 30 seconds of Listerine. Think of all the germs you're killing. Listerine even kills the germs that can cause plaque and gingivitis. See, you can handle it, germs can't. Listerine, worth the time, every time. Why do I rent from Enterprise? For more cargo room. More people room. Or more headroom. Enterprise, so easy it's like having a second car. Or third. Pick Enterprise, we'll pick you up. Greg Gumbel in New York. In Boston, Syracuse has caught fire. Jerry McNamara's three-pointer concludes a 10-2 run. The Orange Men seeking to become the fourth Big East team to head for the Sweet 16. Only a minute two to play there. Let's go back to Tampa. Wake Forest with an 18-12 lead over Auburn, and Wake has led throughout with 11.27 to go in the first half. Auburn right now 0 for 6 from three-point territory. They've knocked down five of their six attempts from two-point range. Tells you a little something, doesn't it? Start getting that ball and driving it towards the basket. You'll have better results. Let's see what they do after the timeout. Half-court set for the Tigers. Bird on a kick out. Eric Williams forced to the bench for Wake Forest with two early personal fouls. Robinson the jump shot. No good. Pretty good patience, though, just then coming after that timeout. They initially looked down low to Robinson. He was open once, missed him, and that forced him to go out 15 feet away. Another freshman, Trent Strickland, is in the game for the first time. Gray now handles the point guard duties for Wake. 15 to shoot. Here's Strickland. Off for Gray. Fires a three. It's amazing the difference of a day, huh? Just come out, you have the confidence, a young player stepping up early, he's got good bounce, 
and really not against the zone, which usually have a little more time to shoot. He's just picking people apart man-to-man. -man. Eight points for Justin Gray, and this Wake Forest team has looked quite different than the one we saw a couple of days ago here in Tampa. Killingsworth forcing his way towards the interior and a foul called. It's the freshman, Chris Ellis, from Marietta, Georgia, picking up his first. And you take a look at Gray. Not bad defensive job right there by Monroe. He's close, but you got to think and look, think about what he did. Uh, Gray, the last game out, he took 16 shots, nine of them from long range, so you have to start thinking he's going to be shooting the basketball again. He's starting to really get a rhythm down early on in this basketball game. To Ron Downey comes back in for Wade. And the Demon Deacons lead it 21 to 12. Wake Forest now is three of five from three-point territory. Good decision here to get it to Killingsworth. Ball movement. It's Monroe. And they just cannot convert on these three-point attempts. Now 0 for 7 from behind the arc. See, I think kids sometimes in the college game think, in the high school game, think you have to take that shot. What's wrong with putting one or two dribbles behind it and getting a closer shot? Getting the ball to 15 feet rather than settling, especially when you're struggling and you're down early on. Gray has had the hot hand, hits the deck, some contact, no call, and the three ball was way off. Yeah, a little bit of a force there, too. Daniel shake and bake into the lane. Good drop pass for Robinson, who finishes. See how quickly Robinson catches and goes. And once again, Daniels with that ability to slash as they come up now with a 2-2-1 defense, a little different look. Cliff Ellis wants to change some defenses. Strickland penetration. Offensive foul. Yeah, Strickland had himself a little bit of a lane just then, but kind of tucked that right shoulder down and pushed away. But watch this little slash move. He goes into the lane, and watch Robinson now. Levy steps up to help out, and that allows Robinson to find the seam underneath. So when you take the ball and put it on the floor once or twice, you get chest-to-chest -chest with the defenders. You get them rotating. You get some easier opportunities. It's a seven-point weight lead. We approach nine minutes to go first half. Daniels, contact. No whistle. See how Daniels is forcing his way into the paint? Smart basketball player. Keep doing it until you get the call. So he'll get his share of them, too. Timer is down to 10. Oh, he's going to get one against him, though. Offensive foul. Marquise Daniels, his first. Another extension of the arm. We've seen that a couple of times in the past few games, not just with him, but other players. Watch for his left arm. It's going to kick out. Boom. Great defensive effort there. Still in the 2 2 1 right now. Levy brings it across the versatility of Jamal Levy at six foot nine, handling the basketball for Skip Prosser's team. A great release to have a guy who can be so versatile with the basketball. Strickland gives up his dribble. Shot clock at 13. Here's Gray handling it. Seven to shoot. Picked up by Daniels. Gray looking for the screen from Ellis. Long distance three. No. Rebound tipped around off of Ellis. Out of bounds. Right, if you notice the way that Gray went to the, the basket just then, he flared away from the basket and didn't turn the corner quickly enough. He's been shooting the ball well. You see that one right there. He came sharper against the uh, off the screen. Here he just has to square up. The last trip, though, when he had the basketball, instead of taking a normal three from the stripe, he was about three feet behind it because he went towards half court over the screen. 21-14, Wake Forest in front. Killingsworth, ball fake, pull up jump. Off the backboard, no good. Killingsworth, offensive rebound. No calls there. <laughs> Letting him play a bit, huh? Going the other way with Gray. Bodies flying. As Robinson went for the block, Gray went down in a hurry. And a foul call. Uh, Cliff Ellis is up off the bench on his side of the floor. I mean, he's wondering what's going on. His guy goes to the basket down the other end, does not get a call. And clearly, I don't think he's arguing with that the call was down this end here at the uh, defensive end because this Gray got hammered going to the basket, but he felt that his guy got hammered also at the other end. The walk-on, Nathan Watson called on the personal foul. Justin Gray, a 78% free throw shooter. Nine first half points for the freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, you would have thought that a young kid would have been pressing the whole afternoon, huh? Yeah. After a two for 16 game. I and mean, he looks as if he went 15 for 16 out there. Right now, Wake Forest has the nine point lead. Spreading the court for El Amin. 10 seconds remaining. El Amin off the box goal. He will force the shot.
From the East Region, second round play, number two, Wake Forest, leading 10th seeded Auburn, 23 to 14, with 7.57 to go on the first half from Tampa. Wake Forest has its largest lead of the day, and they've led from the very beginning. And once again, you look at this with Wake Forest really coming out, look like they're very comfortable on the floor this afternoon, not pressing at all. And also, with Justin Gray leading them from the standpoint of looking for his shots, a two for 16 game the other day, and just really coming back. But one thing I think with Auburn, though, they've started this game shooting the ball from long range and settling a little bit. They really have to focus on going against Wake Forest's front line, especially without Williams on the floor with his two early fouls for Wake Forest. Wake Forest is shooting it at 50% from the field. The winner here will take on Syracuse in Albany after the Orangemen came from behind to knock off Oklahoma State. Wake Forest had the 76-73 win over East Tennessee State on Friday. Williams had 20 points, a career high for the freshman. Auburn, a 65-63 overtime win against St. Joseph's on Friday. Marquise Daniels absolutely took over the game. 25 points, 8 rebounds, 10 of 19 from the field. In that game, Auburn led St. Joe's by 13 at the half only to see the Hawks come from behind in the second half and force the extra session. That was absolutely a game where you could just see the two halves were totally different for both teams. It was a great basketball game. And, you know, with Nelson and Daniels both stepping up for their respective teams, it was really an exciting show for the people in this building. Right now, the SEC is 6-2 and two against ACC teams this season. And here's a guy, Daniel Zion, that really has to continue to step up. He has to be careful that he doesn't try to do too much at the offensive end and run people over because he's got to worry about the fouls. But clearly, he's got to step up. Same thing with Howard. Howard seems real comfortable on the floor this afternoon also. So it's two marquee players right there. Howard on Friday moved into 10th place on Wake's all-time scoring list. He finished with 12 points and 13 boards. Auburn ball, long three, Watson drains it, and the first tray of the day for the Tigers. Daniels playing a little point forward now. He has the ability to do that. It allows every time they score, come back with a 2-2-1, and then they settle back into a man-to-man, -man, Auburn does. Auburn down by six. Highest they will rank this season, number 24 back on January 20th. Howard, good position, and he gets the roll. Terrific, terrific pass by Downey from long range outside and a good, strong back cut by Howard. But the catch at the end of it, he bobbled it for a second. It was a good example of what kind of hands he has to gather in the basketball. Eight points for Josh Howard, the four-year starter for Wake. Upstairs. Look out. Slam down. Gorgeous feed to Daniels. Well, Monroe triggering that from outside. The pace picking up a little bit at both ends of the floor. Here comes Gray off the drive on the pull-up. Rebounded by Killingsworth. Nice snatch in traffic just then for Killingsworth to get back into the play. Up ahead, Monroe. Reset it with Killingsworth. High low action, and Robinson is all by himself underneath the rim. Robinson is such an active player that sometimes you forget about him at the offensive end because he's moving, he's sliding, he's dipping, you can't find him. You look over your shoulder, he goes the other way on you. Excellent sixth man for this Tiger team. Robinson has four points. Danilus is fouled. Off the pump fake, Daniels and Killingsworth were there defensively. Here we go upstairs with the finish. Daniels along the baseline. And watch the delivery of the pass. The pass is right there where you just basically have to catch the basketball and flush it through. Marco Killingsworth picks up the foul. That's his first. Danilus at the free throw line, a 79% shooter, held to two points on Friday afternoon. Wake is now 7 of 7 from the stripe here in this first half. Actually a good foul as you see Williams come back into this basketball game, which is a very interesting de decision by Skip Frasser. And I think part of it is that he wanted to give him some room on the bench, but now with 6.26 left in this half, you have to be very careful if you're Williams, because if I'm Auburn right now, I'm going to try to run one right through your chest a little bit to get that third foul. Wake Forest, 27, Auburn, 21. Yeah, Levy handling them the whole way down. Good call from the officials. It's interesting how sometimes they get the little ones out front and they let the big ones go underneath, so go figure. Speed of Marquise Daniels able to get around Levy as we take a look 
and our tournament summary. And the way things have gone here this season, who would have thought the Big East would be 8-0 and in this tournament? Three teams in the Sweet 16, top three seeds are 19-0. Everybody with the parity was expecting upsets. It sure was. I was for sure coming in. Daniels gets it down low. Killingsworth in a tough position and white jerseys in the area. Even if that ball hit the glass, it's still okay to block it as long as it's not coming down off the glass. Downey off the screen, gives up his dribble. Under six minutes to go in the first half. Watch for the flops defensively here with him with the basketball. Williams blocked by Davis. Auburn's all-time block leader. Low pass, Killingsworth gets the deuce. You see him go to a strong hand there. Clearly, he's a lefty player, but he goes to the strong hand just to go by the defender who was going to cut him off if he went to the right side. Kyle Davis has had a quiet day so far, but... Uh-oh, we're going to go the other way. This is a big call. He was pushed to the floor by Williams in the third personal foul on the Wake freshman. Now, Davis just blocked his shot the last trip down, so you come down mentally and say, I'm going to get back at this guy. I'm going to establish positions. Williams made a big mistake for a youngster just then, and that's a youngster's mistake. A couple of years down the road, he'll, he won't worry about getting his shot blocked in a situation like that, and he won't pick up that needless foul. What did he do? He lasted about a minute on the floor, short of a minute, actually. Lasted about 57 seconds, I believe, that trip up to the floor. High-low action. Killingsworth tied up. It was clean. Here's Gray going the other way for Wake. Put fellas would have disagreed with you, but... Downey from downtown. Downey had a rhythm going the other day, which we touched on, too. And against East Tennessee State, he was effective from the line, the three-point line at five for eight, and now just stepping into one right there. And it's 30 to 23, Wake. Chris Lawler in the game for Auburn. Daniels on a kick out for Bird. Here's Killingsworth using his strong frame. Oh, uh, did you see his foot stay on the floor? Oh, uh, that was a great move in the paint. Excellent use of the window for Marco Killingsworth, six points. He took that big stride through the lane and left his left foot on the floor. It appeared to be a walk, but a good call from the non-call from the officials because it wasn't a violation. Oh, there's a Howard push off down the other end. It was Daniels who got the contact from Howard and the personal foul on Wake Forest's number five. Well, you sense the intensity. This has been fairly well played early on, but the intensity level right now is starting to pick up with just over four minutes left in the half. You mentioned Williams earlier leaving the game with his third foul. Only seven minutes for the Wake Forest center here in the first half. He's had his big problems. They're going to have to find a way to keep him on the floor for the last five minutes of this game. Daniels regathers after losing it. And too strong on that baseline jumper. Downing, wide open three. Off the mark. Danilou's trying to keep it alive. He does. Levy, the ball was wrestled away and a foul call. One of the things the Tigers are going to have to do a better job of finding the guards for Wake Forest as they're coming down the floor. They're not really cutting to the basket, but they're fanning out to that three-point line. If they start to get a hot hand, then both of these guys, when you have Gray and Downey, will shoot the basketball, so they have to come out and find them. Now, when you do that, you have to make sure they don't go bless, blowing past you to the basket at the same time. Second personal foul on Marquise Daniels. Levy trying to add to Wake's lead. Off the mark at the line. And he has struggled from there, 61% on the season. Jamal Levy. Moved to the United States for his junior and senior years of high school from Panama City, Panama. A timeout, 3.57 to go. We are in the first half here in Tampa. Wake Forest leads Auburn by six. It's a magic business lamp. We got it in the merger. You rub it and the business genie grants you three wishes. Cut overhead. Increase efficiency. And improve service. Rub the lamp.
Yeah. It's for you. It's the genie. Hi. We're artists. We build lowrider bikes. Crazy lowrider bikes. Some people don't get it. Check it out now. But that's okay. We're not falling. We take it. What's our thirst? Stop. We're holding on to what's cold. What's yours? On April 11th. I'm Mr. Busnick's anger management therapist. You're in anger management. Meet Dr. Buddy Rydell. You think you can help him? But I can't. I'll tear him apart with my bare hands. His methods are questionable. I don't want you listening to any angry music. The carpenters are angry? His technique is controversial. <laughs> And the experience will be unforgettable. I like to sleep in the nude. Adam Sandler, Jack Nicholson, Anger Management, rated PG-13. Opens April 11th. Morning, William. CJ. Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Looks like somebody got a haircut. Is it too short? They're always glad you can <laughs> Hey, um, no, you can't drive the truck. Who can you count on? You know them by name. Greg Gumbel in New York along with Clark Kellogg. We'll get you back to Auburn and Wake Forest momentarily after we check in first with Nashville, Tennessee, where Maryland has a 10-point lead on the Musketeers, the number three seed. They got off to a good start offensively, doing a nice job rebounding and really attacking the paint. There it is again, Ryan Randall. Right to the hoop. Xavier has really gotten off to a poor start defensively, Greg. Maryland getting everything they want inside right now. I think it's fair to say that we expected much more from the Musketeers, and, and they certainly have the firepower to deliver it as the game progresses. Well, sometimes, Greg, it's simply about intensity and jumping out with a focus and a mindset to where you're ready to battle, and this team right now is having it taken to them by Maryland. And Maryland, you think about their experience from last year, a number of those players that are key guys for them this year, part of that championship team a year ago, and that's always worth a little something, especially the further you move into the tournament. All right, Clark, we'll keep an eye on that game for you. Meanwhile, in Birmingham, Texas, the number one seed in the South with just a two-point lead on the Boilermakers of Purdue. That was a more extensive lead a little while ago, and Purdue's come alive a little bit. Well, Texas will go through droughts. They're a good defensive team, and T.J. Ford, they have perhaps the best point guard in the country. Purdue showed an awful lot of aggressiveness and tenacity in their win against LSU, bringing that same kind of effort so far today and in good shape right now with only six, six minutes being played. I think it's fair to say that in your mind, that was the big question about the Boilermakers today, if they could bring that same game that they played against LSU. Especially at the offensive end of the floor. All right, we'll keep track of that game as well. Meanwhile, let's get you back to Tampa. Auburn and Wake Forest, Diane Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Long three-pointer by Derek Fur to bring Auburn back within six. Wake Forest 34, the Tigers 28, 242 to go here in the first half. It was off glass also, and I'm still going to say that I think Auburn has to spend more time going towards the basket than settling for those long-range jump shots. Howard on the back end against the defensive specialist Bird. Off the rim, rebound taken by Davis. A good kick out to Monroe to get the break going down the other way. Pump fake. Watson trying to get it inside. Killingsworth lost it. Regathers. Can't put it in. And a foul call. Uh, this is just a heck of a play by Killingsworth. He didn't finish it off, but you talk about a sequence of not giving up on a play. Watch him go after it. He gathers it. Now he misses it. And watch what happens to Downey. He's going after the ball. His left arm comes out a little bit, but I think he still has it okay because he got scraped across the face before the left arm came out. Second foul on Teron Downey, and it drew a reaction from the crowd here at the St. Pete Times Forum. You know, regardless of where that call should have gone, one way or another, it really was a good example of the way Killingsworth plays this game, though. He really is a hard-nosed guy, especially when the ball's up for grabs on the blocks. Ellis comes in to replace Downey. You see the numbers on Killingsworth. And hits the first. 
Coming up singular at the half, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news, all the scores and highlights, and a live look at all the action that's coming up on singular at the half. One out of two for Killingsworth. And a good basic play there by Levy just then, blocking out the shooter. The 19 foul on Wake Forest, six have been called against Auburn. Danilus loses the ball, it was up for grabs, but Wake's got it. Gray. They better settle this one down and reload. There we go. Gray's going to take it back. That was just getting uglier and uglier as it progressed. Under two minutes to go, first half. Tantalus lines it up. Short, right there for the offensive rebound. Offensive foul as Tantalus went to slam it. Who were they getting on the call, though? Was it Tantalus or was it away from the ball? I've got the same reaction, Skip. I don't know where they got. I don't know. Tantalus is going to come through now. It's, I didn't see it there against him. It's on Howard. Okay, it's on Howard. Here's Howard down low. You know what Howard did? Howard just pushed Davis. That's why Davis went flying to the right in that shot just then. Josh Howard has picked up his second personal. And a timeout with 1.44 to play. Until halftime here in Tampa. I'll get this. Getting a really low rate on this card. Well, I hope it's a low fixed rate, like my Capital One no hassle card. Low and fixed? So, what's going to happen to my rate? Get the Capital One no hassle card for the nation's lowest fixed rates and no balance transfer fees. What's in your wallet? Retirement plans from the Principal Financial Group can prepare you for almost anything. Yeah, you got it. Retiring! <laughs> At the Principal, we're the nation's 401k leader. We offer mutual funds, annuities, and rollover IRAs, which leads to a secure, happy retirement. Ted! Ted, how'd you do it? Planet. For 120 years, the Principal Financial Group, we understand what you're working for. When athletes sweat, they lose more than just water. Gatorade puts back sodium and potassium. Proven to replenish and rehydrate athletes better than water. Gatorade. Is it in you? All right, here we are. They just got to throw it under the basket. Under the basket. Up. Forest shot. Oh. oh, holy mackerel. Holy Go to NCAAsports.com slash Pontiac today and pick your ultimate Pontiac high-performance plays. You can also enter for a chance to win a 2004 NCAA Men's Final Four Fantasy Package. Only in college basketball. 34 to 29, Wake Forest leading Auburn. It was ruled an offensive foul on Josh Howard. It does go down as a team foul, but a player control foul, so no shots for Auburn. Right, so it'll be possession with Auburn basketball, and not a happy camper right there. The bench with three fouls, Howard picks up his second. Good time for them to go again, once again, down on the blocks. Bird against Gray, trying to turn the corner, cannot. Jump shot is good. Derek Bird, who just hit a bank shot three, and now comes back with an impressive pull-up jump. He's got nine points. Almost a steal for Watson. Here's Strickland, the freshman. Davis came in to block it. Foul called. Bird was there initially. Not sure how Watson missed that shot, too, but here comes Bird. He gets away with a little bit of an extension, and that gives him enough room to buy some space and push back. And here's the challenge. Bird down the other end. He forgets that he has his big guy, the shot blocker Davis, behind them. You almost want to stay away, but instinctively as a guard there, you start playing defense and you look for your own strip and block shot. Second foul on Derek Bird. Trent Strickland, a 78% free throw shooter. 
He has contributed as a freshman from East Flat Rock, North Carolina. Two out of two from the line, and Wake Forest is now 11 of 12 from the strike in this first half. Important decisions right now in the last minute of this half for both basketball teams coming down the stretch. Watson way outside for Auburn. Under a minute to go, first half. Monroe on a bounce for Killingsworth. Levy shades over for the double team. Drop step, out of bounds. Tried to go away from the double team just then. Tonight after basketball on 60 Minutes, Americans in uniform as soldiers, no, as cops getting ready to do battle with terrorists tonight after basketball on 60 Minutes. About an eight-second differential right now. Game clock to shot clock. The look of a 1-3-1 defense for Auburn out front, extending to the wings. Double team on Strickland. Gray with 14 to shoot. 20 seconds on the game clock. Splits defenders for the pull-up. That's smooth. Well, that's smooth, and it's one way to break down his own. Many people think you got to pass to beat his own, but you can beat it off the dribble if you do it with a purpose. 15 points for the freshman Justin Gray, and it's 38-31 weight. A three. Monroe knocks it down. Well, Monroe just said, no one's going to come out and guard me. Let me take my own shot. Shot won't count from Levy, and that's how the first half will end. Wake Forest has never trailed as we hit the break. And they're in front of Auburn, 38 to 34. The number two seeded Demon Deacons. And the Tigers looking to go to the Sweet 16. Let's go to Darren Horton. All right, Ian. Coach, on Friday you said your team played not to lose. They look a lot more aggressive tonight. You happy with what you saw? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, they uh, Auburn shot the three really well. We got to do something about that. And uh, Killingsworth just is killing us inside, and he's a great player inside. So, you know, those are two things that are our major concerns right now. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Ian, back to you. Darren, thanks very much. End of the first half, 38-34. Wake in front. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message. Introducing the Saturn Ion. Specifically designed and engineered for whatever's next. Get a 2003 Saturn Ion L Series or View at 0% APR financing for five years. For restrictions, see your retailer. mobile technology to get information quickly and easily. The world's police forces now fight crime digitally. It's the NCAA tournament site with live scores, updated brackets, and insight from the top coaches. CBSSportsLine.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Don't miss an all-new Survivor on a special night. Somebody's going home. CBS Wednesday. It's tip-off time. Hello, I'm Hudson McGraw, and this is my sidekick, Amy McGraw, with McGraw Webb Chevrolet starting lineup. A 2003 Chevy Avalanche. And a 2003 Chevy Trailblazer. Along with the Silverado, Tahoe, and the big man in the middle, the Chevy Suburban. With this lineup, it's easy to see where McGraw Webb Chevrolet's number one. Nobody's gonna beat McGraw Webb's deal. We let our prices do the talking. Come see us, please. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's Think Big Month at Sonic, featuring our biggest burger ever, the Big Cheese. Two patties, three slices of smoky cheddar topped with bacon and honey pepper sauce and made to order. And try our thousands of drink flavor combinations like our new Orange Cool Breeze. Unnecessary lawsuits against nursing homes drain millions of dollars from the care of our seniors and rob the state Medicaid budget of badly needed funds. We must ensure the highest quality of care possible, but unnecessary lawsuits don't improve quality. 
I'm asking you to join me in urging our legislature to protect our seniors by placing reasonable limits on lawsuits that threaten the future of our Alabama nursing homes. At halftime, two others are in progress, and we'll take you out for a live look in. Coming right up. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. Hi once again, everyone, and welcome to our studio and our two singular at the half. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with my partner, Clark Kellogg. At halftime, the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest with a four-point lead on the Auburn Tigers. Did you expect it to be more? No, I didn't expect it to be more. Auburn's done a nice job getting the ball inside and competing with Wake Forest on the glass, which is a key in this game because Wake Forest does so much of their work on the offensive glass. All right, the winner of this game travels to Albany next weekend. Still very much in doubt. It's a four-point game. 38-24 is the score in Nashville coming up on 345 to play. Maryland and Xavier. Let's take you out to Jim Nance and Billy Packer. And the lay-in by Kaner Medley increases the lead to 16, which is the tallest order of the day. 16. Jim, what's happening is Chalmers or Finn, neither one have been able to stop Blake with dribble penetration. That's setting up numbers down inside. Sato. Oh! Bangs out. Good blocks out by the freshman Garrison. Garrison and Smith, terrific job on the on the glass off the bench. Peter Medley flying through, got it back out, and Blake allowed the reset. Now he's got Finn. Let's see if he breaks him down off the dribble again. Didn't have to. Shooting 62% in this half. Tipped up, Nicholas. Tipped up again, Garrison. And out comes Xavier. Three close-range looks there for the Terrapins. West going to work. Back out, Chalmers. He can hit that shot. Un That's West. Uh, picks up a cheap one on Garrison. That's his second, Billy. And what Gary Williams is doing here beautifully, I think, is using this bench, which is deeper, as we know, than Xavier, to go ahead and steal minutes and now pick up some fouls. Down 16, two fouls on West. When he had two in the first half Friday, they set him, but he's staying on the floor right now. Maryland and Xavier, the winner advancing to the Sweet 16 in San Antonio, where it'll face the winner of the Michigan State-Florida game coming up later today from Tampa. Garrison, yes, he'll get one more. Garrison played for the legendary Morgan Wooten in Morgan's last year at DeMatha. Looks like he's going to be a fine prize. This is an interesting situation in Maryland, Jim. Last year, four seniors moved on. This year, he's got four seniors again, but he's kind of reloading with this freshman class. And be interesting to watch the transition. And like this group of seniors, Blake, a starter on the championship in Final Four teams. Next shot blocked from behind and taken away by Maryland. Again, what West is doing is keeping the ball in possession too long and fading away. So as they approach two minutes in Nashville, Maryland very much in charge. The Terps lead at 41 to 24. In Birmingham, Purdue taking on the top seed in the South, the Texas Longhorns. The Longhorns have a two-point lead. Let's go there live. Craig Bowlerjack, Dan Bonner. Eight and a half minutes left here in Birmingham. First half, Texas taking the lead over Purdue, the one seed against the ninth seed in the South. 20 to 18. Willie Dean leading Purdue with nine points. Erskine, who just came off the bench with a quick five, leads Texas. T.J. Ford back in the game with two fouls. Purdue had a 14 to nine lead, but Texas has stopped turning it over, and as a result, their offense starting to function more efficiently. Man-to-man -man by Purdue. Four ties, four lead changes. Thomas wasn't looking, came off his elbow. Here comes Dean, waiting for some help. All stripped away by Ivy. Oh, look at that. He looked one way, and the ball went above his head, turned it over. A timeout, 7.45 left in the opening half, and it's Texas by two.
This April, Lexus will put the world on notice. Again, the entirely new RX 330. It's coming. So, you're hanging up the whistle, eh, Coach? Yeah, kind of hard to believe. So, can a girl buy you dinner? Coach, sorry, could you help me with something? Sure. This goes up there. At Applebee's, <laughs> we do our best to be part of the neighborhood. I swim the 200. I study sociology. I grind out laps. I cram for tests. I race nationals. I take finals. And when I finish, I'll be ready to start. There are 360,000 NCAA student athletes. And thanks to continued support, Coca-Cola helps them pursue their dreams. I have to focus gather everything I've learned, all my successes, all my sacrifices, all my pain, and concentrate that energy into one moment. Ah! That's a moment I'll use every single day of my life. <gasps> there are 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. Think, read, react, struggle, struggle. succeed, grow. Every, Every time, time we step, step on the floor, floor class is in session. session. There are 360,000 NCAA student athletes. And each one of us is getting two educations. Texas leads Purdue by two, and Keith Lowe, one of the great Boilermaker guards, has had some shoulder problems this season, as he did last year. And for more on that, let's go to the third member of our team. And we go courtside. Here's Fred Haber. Well, Craig, you're right about that. The guy with the most unenviable job in this building tonight has got to be Purdue's Kenneth Lowe. He's got to chase T.J. Ford all around this gym today, and he's got to do it with that bum shoulder. Take a look at what happened to him in the game on Friday. He re-aggravated that already dislocated shoulder. It didn't come all the way out, but it did move some. So look at the break he's got to use here. It's a, a three-piece apparatus, kind of like a, a wetsuit. It's cumbersome, it's painful, uh, but he says, hey, this is March. We'll have time for pain in April, guys. Agreed. Purdue trailing Texas by two. Low, by the way, one of three so far, Dan. Only two points. And Texas dropped back into a 3-2 or a 1-2-2 zone. And we're in that the last time down the court, and it's going to make Purdue stand a little bit. Purdue has played much better when they've been able to get out in transition. They've struggled a little bit in their half-court set. Dean from long range off in front of the iron. Teague turns around and gets the soft jumper. Right place, right time. Two buckets for David Teague, the freshman from Indianapolis. 2020, Purdue and Texas. Ford, the floater, around out. And a rebound goes to Teague. Boy, Play nice job by Teague. Playing both ends. Willie Dean. And Ford picks him up quickly. Under seven minutes left. Opening half from the corner. Three ball, around and out. Boddicker the rebound. Purdue right. stays in the man-to-man. -man. Mouton comes out. Guarded by the freshman, Melvin Buckley. Clock sets a screen. Ivy wants it. Has a good look and hits the three. Royale Ivy from Queens, New York. His first bucket of three, and Texas by three. Ivy has only made now 12 three-point baskets on the season. Only a 26% shooter. There's Buckley on the inside. Gets nothing. Tough start for Buckley, who did play so well against LSU. Boddicker picks up the foul. So Purdue and Texas, a three-point game, battling for the right to move on to San Antonio and meet Connecticut. And you're impressed with the way Purdue has played this I game. really am. Willie Dean is their offensive weapon, and he's done a nice job keeping his team in it. But Purdue has battled nicely on the glass and staying close there in the first half. All right, let's advise our viewers what's coming up in primetime this evening. We have two more games on the slate. 
At about 7 o'clock Eastern Time, Michigan State takes on number two Florida in the south, and then the top seed Kentucky meets number nine Utah in the Midwest. We thank you for watching Singular at the Half. Coming up next, Dan Rather with a CBS News special report, America at War. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. There it is. Oh, change of plans, turn right. Whoa! Introducing Cayenne, pure Porsche. In a most unexpected form. I pull for the underdog. I yell at the coaches, blast the refs. I pray, curse, cry. I will drop down on my knees and beg for a three-pointer from half court. You're going to love the Singular NCAA text package. Only Singular provides interactive voting during NCAA men's tournament broadcasts and sports alerts. Get all this plus unlimited text messaging for only $2.99 a month. I call it the Hank Fowler. Yeah, baby. Plan. Go to Singular.com slash NCAA or visit your Singular store now to find out why Singular fits you best. Dan Rather reporting from CBS News World Headquarters in New York with more about the war. President Bush says the invasion is moving along well. U.S. troops today did see some of the hardest fighting in the war so far near the town of Anasaria. There was an ambush there. Ten to fifteen American Marines are dead, others missing. CBS Newsman Kirk Spitzer is there. Colonel O'Rourke uh, described the fighting as much heavier than the Marines had expected. He said that they fought the, um, the Iraqis fought very hard. Uh, many of the Iraqis uh, fought right to the death. Very few attempted to surrender. In fact, many who uh, there were many Iraqis who who feigned uh, surrendering and picked up weapons and began attacking Marines um, when they bypassed their their positions. The uh, fighting raged all day and into the night. It's continuing even as we speak. There was also a bloody firefight in southern Iraq. Mark Phillips reports on a fierce battle for a small but important port. American and British forces around Umm Qasr in the very south of Iraq are still encountering pockets of stubborn resistance. It took a burst of intense fire to subdue one group of Iraqis who had been holding out in the town. Grenades were used to kill all six holdouts, but a secondary gas tank explosion burned some of the attackers. It was the second major firefight in the area today. Tanks and airstrikes had to be used to root out another Iraqi strong point this morning. Dan. Mark Phillips, there was another air attack on Baghdad today. The targets were not civilians or civilian infrastructure. The targets were governmental and military. Also in Baghdad, Iraqi soldiers and security forces have been searching the shores of the Tigris River. They say that they're looking for a downed Allied air crew. David Chater of Britain Sky TV has this late update about that. They've set fire to the trees. Uh, they've got searchlights. One, about 100 uh, armed men searching for this person, whoever this person is, shots ringing out. They've captured the man they were searching for. Uh, I believed it to be a pilot. This is what the Iraqis are telling me. A uh, pilot or the navigator, the missing man, they say they've already caught one. Uh, they were chasing the second right past my hotel, firing shots, uh, setting fire to the park. CBS News correspondent David Martin reports the 101st Airborne Division, parts of it, has leapfrogged ahead of other U.S. troops, and they're now just about 100 miles from Baghdad. And Cynthia Bowers reports from the aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln that this is causing some changes. Coalition forces are advancing northward so quickly, the Navy has had to improvise how it protects troops from the air. It's now using some of its F-18E Super Hornet attack jets as mid-air tankers, loading them with fuel tanks instead of bombs. Why? Because they fly much faster and at higher altitudes than the traditional tankers, which means other fighter jets flying with them can get into position to provide cover more quickly and stick around a lot longer. Cynthia Bowers, CBS News, on board the USS Lincoln in the Persian Gulf. And this word from U.S. forces in the forgotten war still going on in Afghanistan. A U.S. Air Force helicopter has crashed in Afghanistan, killing six. Stay with CBS for war coverage. We break news, and we break in when any important news breaks out. This is CBS, 
America's most watched network. I was born Around here, there's a different adventure around every bend. And there's no better way to gear up than with our best trucks during Dodge Truck Month. Through the end of March, you'll find our low financing offers or our best deal with a generous cash allowance on Motor Trend's 2003 Truck of the Year. Plus, grab our best protection, our fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. It all adds up to the best values in America. Dodge Truck Month, extended through March 31st. <laughs> So, you think going one-on-one -on -one with a pro basketball player would be tough? Try beating Alpha's auto insurance rates. Call Alpha. Fast, fair service. Game over. Friendly people. Let me get that rate for you. At Alpha Insurance, we're proud of our low insurance rates. And sometimes it shows. Call Alpha. Oh, you're gonna love this. Fast, fair service. Friendly people. Do you want more out of your TV? I'm David Earnhardt of Omega Satellite. Let us show you how with Dish Network Satellite TV's digital home plan. For a one-time activation fee of just $49.99, you can connect up to four, count them, four TVs to one Dish antenna. That includes delivery, standard professional installation, and you'll get a $49.99 credit on your first month's bill. Dish Network quality with one low upfront payment. And get this, monthly programming starts at just $29.99 for 50 digital channels. Call, Call Omega Satellite, Satellite today. today. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, Monster, HP, and by Comfort Inn. It's halftime in the East Bracket, and Wake Forest with the lead over Auburn, 38 to 34, as we welcome you back. Tampa Iron Eagle, along with Jim Spinarco, Wake Forest has looked more like the team that they were throughout the season, the team that won the ACC regular season title, and Auburn had a reputation of being physical coming into this game. They've lived up to that reputation in the first half. Well, they have, Ian, and I think that the tone really has been set at the free throw line, believe it or not, which is a carryover of how these two teams are playing. Auburn's been to the line four times only. Wake Forest has been to the line 12 times. So you do, you add it up. One's three for four, the other's 11 for 12. You're going to have a problem if you're Auburn and you don't go to the line that much more. Take a look at the halftime numbers. Three pointers. Auburn relying upon the three early on. They did finish three of 10 in the first half. Wake Forest, five of 11. And you look at the bottom. Bottom line right there, 3 of 4, 11 of 12. Auburn has to do a better job of not settling for the outside shot and try to plug it down to the, the post or drive it to the post. Skip Frosser makes a change starting play in the second half. It will be Gray getting the nod over Williams, who's in foul trouble. Only seven minutes of action and three personal fouls for the freshman center. Daniel Galab, Monroe catches it, comes down with it to the corner. Ball movement leads to a Daniels three. Short. Good decision there, rotating the basketball around, but Daniels just didn't really have any body and any legs into that jump shot. Gray, the high man in the first half with 15 points for Wake. Marquise Daniels had eight for Auburn. And Derek Bird with nine. Here's Gray for Levy. First minute of play, second half. At the St. Pete Times Forum, winner will go to Albany, New York in a meeting with Syracuse in the Sweet 16. Runner for Howard, no good. And a loose ball foul. Killingsworth had position. 18.59 to go here. Second half, Wake Forest 38, Auburn 34. Personal foul on Vitas Danalus of Wake. Demon Deacons have never trailed here this afternoon. A little size advantage here. Daniel should try to get Gray down on the blocks if they stay with this set. Off the back end. Davis, the finish off the glass. They'll get him involved a little bit once again. I think the front line of Auburn has to play a little bigger down low on the offensive end. They're pretty good rebounders. They're pretty good at the defensive end. Start to step it up a little bit, and then Daniels can step in and take over. First two of the game for Kyle Davis, the junior. Danilo's ball fake. And a foul called as he tried to take the baseline. 
You know, Davis was out of position initially there because of the ball fake. And Danilus does a lot of things that don't go really get a whole lot of pub and get noticed all the time. But he's a terrific basketball player who does all the dirty work for this team. First foul on Davis. Outside, Howard, the jumper. He hits. And a good decision also by Levy there on the inbounds play. They had the ball closer to the basket. Sometimes when there's a lot of traffic in there, you want to kick it out. Howard just found a nice spot where he could be seen on the floor. Josh Howard now with 10 points. Excellent perimeter ability for the 6'6-inch six six senior. Bird blocked by Howard on the defensive end. Davis loses his foot and out of bounds off of Auburn. At halftime, our own Darren Horton spoke with Auburn coach Cliff Ellis. Cliff Ellis, your team was down by as much as nine. You were able to whittle it down to four. What do you have to do to get over the top? Well, I think the guy that stu stuck his head up for Wake Forest has been Gray. Off the bench, 15 points. Uh, been a 28-29% three-point shooter. He's hit big shots. we got to get out on him. Continue to focus on the boards and transition because that's where Wake's going to score. Keep him off the line. Keep going inside. Thank you very much. I am back to you. Off the deflection, Auburn hurries ahead. Bird on line for a three, but a little too much on it. Here's Gray the other way. Had the big first half. Gray leaning in. Gets the roll. Well, his decision's been very, very good. We've seen him do a number of things. Shoot the ball from long range. We've seen him pull up from seven or eight feet away after he's broken people down on the dribble. And then all the way to the glass. Was with a tough one just then after breaking down some players in the open floor. 17 points for Gray. His career high is 20. He scored it against Wisconsin, the freshman. The tone of his first half was when Auburn started to get in trouble, they made some decisions and started going to the basket and had better results. Let's see if they can go towards it now. Monroe loses the ball. Here's Danilux. The law. Catch. Layup. Doesn't go for Howard. See, sometimes too much emphasis is put on this two-on-one breaks with the lobs. They have to go with the basic basketball. Half-court set for Auburn. Killingsworth drop pass. Daniels. Great body control for the bucket. Ten points for Marquise Daniels. And somebody blew a whistle there, too, Ian. I think there might be an N1 call here, possibly. Well, they're keeping it on this end of the floor as Daniels saunters towards the free throw line. Watch this catch in the traffic now. He catches the basketball, but watch his body. He bangs first and then comes down and shoots the shot after the hit. Guys who know how to get to the line learn how to do that at a young age. It's part of their game going forward. He's very good at finding the, the contact. And Daniels completes the three-point play. Once again, even on a free throw attempt, a couple of bodies were banging just then. Levy went to the floor, so the intensity level, which was pretty good at about five or six minutes left in the first half of this ball game, starting to pick up a little bit more here now. Levy called on the foul. That's his first, and some action on the other end of the floor. Well, that was Monroe and Greg down along the baseline. And as it just touched on the intensity level, Cliff Ellis looking down the other end of the floor, but there was some banging and bruising going on with the little guys this time. Monroe gets called on the foul, his first. Kick out for Howard, new shot clock to work with for Wade. They lead by three. But it's own good step across by Bird just then to help out. Downey will reset it for the Demon Deacons, number two seed in the East. Howard, long three, front rim. Kept alive by Auburn, and here's Bird. Good work by Killingsworth there, and the block out on Dallas. Wake Forest hasn't been at the 316 since 1996, and the whistles are coming in a hurry here in this second half. Levy, his third personal foul in a three-point game. If you're heading out there, I'll give you a tip. It's wild and it's far, and you're in for a trip. For just when you think it couldn't get rougher, the path goes crooked and the going gets tougher. But once you've traveled this far off the track, you won't settle for less, and there's no going back. The powerful Chevy Tahoe, like a rock. Right now, the only thing standing between the supervisor and his weekend is somebody loading this pallet on a five-ton truck to Tuscaloosa. Nearby, a fast, dependable forklift operator needs a good job. 
that's where we come in. Employers, call 888-MONSTER. Post your job and find the right person for it. Because now, blue collar, white collar, no collar, Monster works for everybody. factory over a fax machine. You can't impress a client with just email. Not that I haven't tried. Sometimes they gotta see that winning smile. Choice Hotels offers more than 2,500 locations across the country. Because staying close to your business can take you far from your office. This smile remains undefeated. Now when you stay at any Choice Hotel, you'll earn triple miles from participating airlines. Call 800-4-CHOICE. That's the power of being there. Tiger Woods shoots for a feat never accomplished in the history of the Masters. Three consecutive green jackets. The Masters is on CBS. Jim, the numbers have been pretty much awash throughout other than the free throw attempts. Wake Forest getting to the line with regularity. Yeah, you look also, Ion, at this number right here. Keep in mind that Wake Forest, number one in the country in rebounding, and they've only been out-rebounded twice this year by Maryland and Virginia early on in the season. So you look at this number and Auburn hanging around on the glass. Keep watching that number as we go forward. It's going to be a big one as this one plays out. Mentioned the third foul called on Levy. Williams is on the bench for Wake Forest with three fouls. Killingsworth off the inbounds. He lost control of it. That was a great setup, too. A set play and a terrific delivery by Monroe outside. Killingsworth could not finish, though. 42-39, Wake. Out on the perimeter, Levy. Challenging man-to-man -man defense right now. Certain guys they attack, and certain guys they kind of let catch the basketball. On a switch off, Dana loose, up and under, misses it, follows his own shot for a slam. You see the importance of Davis defensively making Dana loose go to the other side of the basket to really catch it. Good step in by Howard. Almost a turnover. It's Daniels, ball fake, left hand, doesn't get the roll. It came off the rim. And last touch by Wake. You see the big guy make Danilus force a shot to the other side, but now watch the delivery. This is what he does so well. He completes plays and continues to go after it. Misses it there and then comes high and strong for the finish. Daniels triggers in for Bird. Wake Forest leading Auburn by five. Just over five minutes gone by here in the second half. Monroe makes his move. Off the fingertips of Killingsworth, out of bounds. Tonight after basketball on 60 Minutes, Americans in uniform as soldiers, no, as cops getting ready to do battle with terrorists. Tonight, after basketball on 60 Minutes. Well, two times now we've seen Auburn try to get Killingsworth involved down on the blocks. One time he fumbled the pass himself. The other time Bird did not deliver the goods to him, so they're at least looking to go to the blocks. Third Auburn turnover in the second half. Danilo, wow. Davis came out, his third block. And a whistle stops play. If there is a reason that Davis is their leading shot blocker of all time. Did he ever close from a long distance? Look at him get up in the air and get a hand on the basketball and then also save the basketball for a moment. And look at this, trying to go after the foot and the leg of Danilus, but Danilus sharp enough to move out of the way. Foul, though, called on Marquise Daniels, his third. Killingsworth takes a seat. Downey with the right hand doesn't go. Well, Davis has been a factor the last three trips defensively. I think that's going to be Danilus reaching in. <laughs> Davis comes out of there smiling. He's just bouncing like a pogo stick up and down on every single shot. Second foul on Danilus. Davis has not played a role, though, on the offensive end. He was so active in the first game. And their win over St. Joseph's. Eric Williams back in for Wake, playing with three fouls, manning the middle. Daniel, skip pass, bird a three. Air ball, caught by Danilus. Wake Forest going into their version of a 2-3 zone that trip. 
And Auburn starts the second half two of eight from the field and a foul called out front. It was Monroe getting called on his second personal foul. Initially, you'd think pretty good position, but the hands extend first. The second look at it looks like there's a charging call, but the first part of that play is Monroe reaches out, and that's why he gets called before the charge. Slow moving second half, lots of whistles, and Daniels goes to the bench with three fouls. Downey clears it for the wrong man. Here's Monroe accelerating. Gray picks his pocket and just saved his team two points off the board. You know, you make an interesting point there how the whistles are being blown more frequently. A lot of people think that it's the, the officials that are changing the game, but it's really the players that are changing the game. And from the first half to the second half, the intensity level, kind of like not the cheap shots, but the more aggressive play down low has caused the officials to blow the whistle more. So it's the teams rather than just the officials saying, well, we're going to call this tighter right now. Brandon Robinson in the game for Auburn. They trail by five. They've hit a cold spell on the offensive end. Nathan Watson in for the Tigers. Monroe looks. Davis can't catch it. Uh, the big guys are just forgetting the basketball. And Gray hurt himself. He went down after the collision. I don't think Skip Process saw it. Now he takes a look. They have to blow the whistle on that. Gray banging his head as bodies collided in the lane as they were trying to get the ball Auburn to Davis. And I think he's under Williams, isn't he? Mm -hmm. You can't see him. And that's being under six foot nine, 270 yep, there pounds. He is. He's down below, right in there. It was his own player he collided with. They help him up to his feet, and now Gray will jog towards the sideline. And it's easy for me to say it's, you're going to collide with one of your teammates. You don't want to pick the guy who's six nine, 270 mm. to collide with. You're looking for a walk-on in that situation, maybe. <laughs> a little one. That's got, weighs about 165 pounds. They make the substitution. Trent Strickland, fellow freshman, comes in to replace Gray, who has had a terrific night on the offensive end. Gray with 17 points, 15 of which came in the first half on 6 of 9 from the field. Howard way outside. Wake Forest leads by 5. Williams gives up his dribble. Here's Downey against Monroe. In each possession, it's a half-court battle game right now. We haven't seen much of the transition in the second half at all. Strickland makes his move. He got Davis in the air. Pocket pick. Shot clock down to one, and it won't matter. Shot clock violation. Unless there was a call along the baseline, there was not. Watch Davis again, stepping in right here. The second guy coming in, forcing the action, forcing Strickland to hesitate a little bit, allowing his teammate to come in and block the shot from behind. Watson coming in and making the play, but Davis has been sensational defensively. May not be getting a bunch of blocks on him, but he is really a factor in getting Wake Forest to A, look over their shoulder, to think about what's going on as they go through the lane. Field goals, not your team shooting it well in this second half. 12.45 to go in regulation. Auburn trailing Wake by five. Monroe, keep it on the outside. Bird, pump fake. Somebody's going to have to try to go by a perimeter player eventually. Watson, his three-pointer won't go. Down a little swing in the elbows. No call. Well, Davis went for a little swing for the basketball. Downey swings it to Strickland. That's blocked by Robinson. Dana loose. Loses control. It's a three-on-one development. Monroe. Law. Robinson. Athletic play going towards the hoop. Well, a three-on-one. Go with the lob. The fundamentalist would say go with the bounce pass or go with the direct layup. You have to get something out of that play. Auburn does. And all of a sudden, they're starting to knock on the door a little bit more. Wake Forest leading by three. Under 12 minutes to go. Williams gets a touch. He's been a non-factor. Arch Davis in the post defensively, too. He's been terrific. Danilo's high low. Williams using the body. Pump fake. Foul call. Shot won't count off the follow. Eric Williams is going to the free throw line for two. 11.48 to play. We are in the second half. Wake Forest, the number two seed in the East, leading 10th seeded Auburn 
44 to 41. Winner here will go to the Sweet 16 in Albany, New York. Syracuse already with the victory today against Oklahoma State. The Orangemen are waiting. And in a game where the halftime score was 38-34 in favor of Wake Forest, a game that had some pretty good pace. Now all of a sudden what's happened is we've turned this into a rugged half-court game. You see Danilo's throwing a little bit of an elbow. Davis coming in. But the breaks have been put on this game for the last eight minutes or so in the second half. These guys are just battling it out every single possession all the way through. Kyle Davis goes to the bench, his second personal foul. Eric Williams, three first half fouls, did not start this second half. Skip Prosser electing to go with Justin Gray, who had the hot hand. Four points now for Williams. Wake Forest in front, 46 to 41. Second half. For as you all know, winning is a great feeling, and it's okay to celebrate. The way you celebrate says a lot about you. So keep up the good work. Being responsible, respecting the law, celebrating safely. It's all about having a good head on your shoulders. Figuratively speaking. A message from the National Association of State Universities and Land-Grant Colleges and Anheuser-Busch. Purchase 20 tons of steel for the factory in Milan. Piece of cake, next. Buy 300 hydraulic assemblies for the Washington factory by Friday. Done. Ooh, best price on titanium discs in Singapore. Oh, look at this, four partners ready to bid. As you bore me. You guys have any light bulbs? How many pallets? Domestic or international? No, just one. I can't do one. He can't do one. .NET Connected Software helps you connect with partners. That's software for the agile business. From Microsoft. Chevy Avalanche. It changes from a pickup to an SUV. What are you doing? Avalanche, like a rock. Be a part of the madness when Craig Kilborn takes the Late Late Show to New Orleans starting Monday, March 31st on CBS. You know my nickname in college? The Big Easy. Five-point game. Let's send it over to Darren Horton. Thank you very much, Ian. I'm with Bob and Sharon Lepore. Their son is a guard for Wake Forest, but their other son, Chris Lepore, is a cross. He's a U U.S. Naval Intelligence Officer, and he's fighting in the war on terrorism. This must be a very awkward situation for you to be here at a basketball game while your son's fighting in a war. Yes, it really is an emo emotional roller coaster for us. On the one hand, to be here at the NCAA tournament with our son, his life dream to play here. And on the other hand, our, our other son over there in the Gulf someplace uh, on a ship, and we're really not sure what's happening there, but uh, we just pray a lot. Sharon, I understand that Chris has sent you some emails. Yes, he sends them usually once or twice a week. And usually the first thing he asks about is how Steve's doing and how Wake Forest is doing and about things back home. Thank you very much. Our thoughts and prayers are with Chris. Ian, let's go back to you. All right, Darren, thank you. Chris, a standout football player for the Naval Academy. Steve transferred from Northwestern, suffered an ACL injury last year, didn't get a chance to participate in the NCAA tournament, but got in in Wake Forest's opening round victory over East Tennessee State. Eric Williams, his fourth personal foul. Brandon Robinson goes to the free throw line for Auburn, a chance to complete a three-point play and cut the Wake lead to two. And it seems as if both of these teams, and Auburn in particular, have decided that it's a little better percentage-wise to get this ball going towards the basket. It allows them to change up their defense a little bit now to go 2-2-1. Two, two, 
Get a little activity at the defensive end. Strickland driving, running one-hander. No good. Howard flies in and cleans it up. Howard came a long way down the floor to get to that ball. When that shot was taken, he was about at the top of the key and continued right down the middle of the floor to finish it. 12 points, six rebounds, three blocks for Josh Howard, the senior. Wake Forest up by four. Daniels flicks a pass cross court. Inside, Killingsworth a double team. Well, Killingsworth keep that pivot foot though. Almost traveled. Monroe a three. Way off. And Howard is fouled. And Monroe actually shooting that on the way down. Wake Forest with the four-point lead, 10-51 on the game clock. And the sixth team foul against Auburn. They are 0 for 5 from three-point territory in this half. 3 of 15 overall. It's just not working. Downey using the high screen by Levy. Strickland seeing extended minutes. The freshman. Howard lines it up. In and out on a three ball. And the rebound controlled by Daniels for Auburn. Howard looking for a call just then. He thought he was bumped from long range, but no call. Play continues. Killingsworth. Jumper. Knocks it down. Well, Killingsworth played a little guard, a two-guard position in high school. And so he can shoot that shot. 17-footer right there. Gives him a little bit of a lift. Watch for him in the post as they come down the floor the next few times. Nine points for Marco Killingsworth. This is a two-point game. Howard loses the ball, and it's taken away by Watson. Monroe, high arcing pass. Here's Daniel. Stops, pops, short, rebound, snatched by Robinson. Turns, and a jump ball. Possession arrow to wait. That's terrific work by the officials also. All working well, and here's Killingsworth. A little jump shot from just about the foul line area. And then the work down the other end of the floor. You see guys going after Daniel. Come up a little short on his shot, but then Robinson keep going to work. And a timeout with 9.56 to go. Two points disparity. Here we go. Steal. Down the middle. One on one. Bam! <laughs> Did you see what I see? Because I saw a robber. I saw a robber. Does anybody want to coach? Yeah, we had up, man. Hey, you crazy, man? That's Corinthian leather. And use the footstool to get to the refrigerator. I'm running all over y'all like a treadmill. Oh, ball home. I am the greatest. I'm the greatest. Can't stop it. It's mad hot. I'm telling you. I'm just super nice in it, you know? That's all. When you nice like right <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That's all like that is When I get older, losing my hair, many years from now, will you still be sending me a valentine, birthday greetings, bottle of wine? If it been out till quarter to three, would you lock the door? Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? On April 11th, I'm Mr. Busnick's anger management therapist. You're in anger management? Meet Dr. Buddy Rydell. You think you can help him? But I can't. I'll tear him apart with my bare hands. His methods are questionable. I don't want you listening to any angry music. The carpenters are angry? His technique is controversial. Oh. And the experience will be unforgettable. I like to sleep in the nude. Adam Sandler, Jack Nicholson, Anger Management. Rated PG-13. Opens April 11th. Greatest moments in NCAA basketball, 1956, the perfect season, 1957, triple unbelievable overtime, 1982, New Orleans voodoo, 1983, the Cinderella story, 1992, the greatest game played ever. You're going to love the singular NCAA text package. Only singular provides interactive voting during NCAA men's tournament broadcasts and sports alerts. Get all this plus unlimited text messaging for only $2.99 a month. I call it the Fred Jumper, never miss a moment plan. Go to singular.com slash NCAA or visit your singular store now to find out why singular fits you best. Rejoining you from Tampa and coming up Wednesday on CBS, Survivor is on a special night. A surprise twist is about to blow the game wide open. Don't miss an exciting all-new Survivor special night Wednesday, 8, 7 Central on CBS, America's most watched network. Howard and Williams each getting a rest with 9.56 to go. And their Wake Forest team in front by two. Daniels remains on the floor for Auburn. Senior leadership as you get late into these second halves 
around the bracket, which leaders can emerge for their respective teams is always a question. And it's always a lot of fun to watch, too, as these teams come down the stretch. Gray leaves it for Danilus. And a push call before the shot from Danilus. And the 17 foul against Auburn. You can follow every play from each game of the NCAA tournament in the Game Center, along with updated scoreboards at cbssportsline.com or on America Online, enter keyword CBS Sports Line. Kellingsworth picks up his second personal foul, and Dana loses at the free throw line, a 79% shooter. No good, a one and one situation. And neither of these teams really going to the free throw line much at all in the second half. Auburn did not go really much, only four attempts in the first half, so. Daniels, it's offensive. He got tangled up as he went down with Strickland. Ted Hillary working also with Tony Green to make that call. Tony Green had it from the outside. It's number four on Daniels. This is one where you put your shoulder down a little bit right there, and then the arm comes up. Mm. Clearly, once again, it's so easy to make that call if you have even halfway decent position defensively, and you see that big arm come up. The officials really flag that one. And now Daniels is forced to the bench. Gray for Downey. Watson able to stick with him. Monroe guarding Gray. Spin move to the lane. A dish inside. Levy put it off the rim. Boy, a nice drop-off pass, too, but there was so much traffic that Levy just had really no choice but just try to throw a scoop at it. Who's going to step up now? Let's see if they can get the ball down on the blocks. And Killingsworth also a factor. To the lead. No good. Off the rim. Rebound action. This. Tracked down. Watson's got it, and we are tied at 48, the first tie of the game. Great work off the offensive glass just then. Robinson in particular kept it alive. Watson working from the guard position. And Auburn's starting to believe in themselves again. And the Tigers controlling the paint area. And they didn't believe in themselves in the first game here where they had some troubles against St. Joe. Great. Stutter step to the rim, and he's fouled. Justin Gray, a 78% shooter. Some contact out front, Robinson initially. Now watch Robinson right there in the middle of your screen. Now he goes up and works and brings two players with him, allows Watson to get the loose ball. Robinson didn't get the touch, but because he worked so hard, he brought two Wake Forest players to him, allowing the ball to drop to Watson. Howard comes back in for the Demon Deacons. Third foul on Brandon Robinson for the Tigers. Gray can break the tie and does. 18 points for Justin Gray, all ACC freshman team. He's been instant offense off the bench for Wake Forest, but he was a starter when they came out onto the floor for the second half here today. Gray, one out of two. And the rebound taken by Watson, who has played well for Auburn off the bench. So what? Auburn as a team just then was a little late getting into the lanes, blocking out. They duck, ducked one right there. Bird on the perimeter. One point, Wake Forest lead. Bird against Howard. Bird may want to challenge him, try to go towards the basket against Howard. Force him to play you some defense. Shot clock at 13. Monroe handles it. Pressure from Downey. High screen, Robinson. Monroe, six to shoot. A three. He buries it. And Auburn has its first lead of the day. Great work in using that screen also. Fabulous job. Let those defenders get tucked behind a screen and just come up firing. The number 10 seeded Tigers leading second seeded Wake. And a foul called as Howard curls towards the rim. Hey, look at the work, Monroe. Where are the defenders? They're sliding behind the high screen. And he recognized very quickly to get good elevation and a good square up to the hoop. Third foul on Derek Bird. <laughs> and the reaction from Cliff Ellis going up against Skip Frosser for the first time in their respective coaching careers. It's 51 to 50. Howard with 13 points, seven boards, three blocks, and now six of six from the free throw line. Paul nodded up. 51 apiece, 727 to go.
powerful new Silverado is here. Still available with the 340 horse Vortec V8. in a college basketball miracle. Dick Vitale, silent for an entire 17 seconds. It must be the crust, the juicy toppings on that delivery pizza. For fresh baked pizza at home. Play DiGiorno's Advance to the Dance. You could win a trip to the 2004 NCAA Men's Final Four, one of 70,000 prizes. Details on specially marked boxes. The candidate. We'd like you to run for president. Get out of here. The running mate. I'm with the pork commission. Chris Rock. Gets me so hot. Bernie Mac. Head of state. Rated PG-13. Starts this Friday everywhere. Why do we rent from Enterprise? Because having the right car makes all the difference. Grandma, look, they're here. Hi, Grandma. <laughs> pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Hey, Bob. Hey. You get a new haircut? Uh, no. Hey, Bob. Hey. Did you lose weight? Uh-uh. New jacket, Bob? Nope. What's different? He finally asked his doctor about Viagra. Ready to ask your doctor about Viagra for the first time? Find out if a free sample is right for you. To learn more, visit Viagra.com. Call the sitter and walk the dog. And I saw the doctor. Ask your doctor and see the difference. 7.27 to go from Tampa. Number two seed in the East, Wake Forest. Tied with a 10th seed, Auburn, 51-51. Wake led it throughout the first half, never trailed until just a few minutes ago when Auburn took its first lead of the day, and right now we're all knotted up. And Friday afternoon when Auburn was playing well against St. Joe's in the second half, they kind of disappeared. Not been the case this afternoon against Wake Forest. They've answered the bell in the second half and doing quite well. Burr to the rim. Pass off. Killingsworth can't handle it. And Wake Forest in transition. Howard stop and go. A kick out. Offensive foul. It's Howard. Oh, and I think it was Watson defensively also. Smart play defensively just there. After Downey made a good play down the other end. Here's the stand, and look, right there, bang, he's willing to take it off the pass by Howard. Yeah, you get Howard thinking a little bit now. Howard, his third personal foul, second called on the offensive end. Under seven minutes to go. Winner goes to the Sweet 16 in Albany, New York. Monroe swings it. Here's Bird on the perimeter against Howard. Puts it on the floor. Float, Bird, short. Tip knocked around, out of bounds. And it'll be Wake Forest ball. Here's the foul situation. Daniels, Auburn's leading scorer this season, over 18 per game, has four. Williams has been in foul trouble for Wake Forest throughout the day. Wake Forest shot it at 48% in the first half, just 27% from the field. Oh, that's gonna Second be... half, and they turned it over. Auburn basketball, good call right there. Right off Howard's foot. Robinson very active defensively and closed double-teaming Howard, so they're going to run a double-team at him, it seems like, if he catches it on the blocks. 13th turnover for the Demon Deacons today. Auburn has really been focusing on looking down towards the basket first or driving it towards the basket. Let's see if they continue that strategy. Killingsworth cuts to the rim. Foul called. It came off the front of the iron. And two free throws coming up for the sophomore Marco Killingsworth. Wake Forest 51, Auburn 51, with 6.15 to go in the second half. Marco Killingsworth for the Tigers is at the line, and he has given Auburn a one-point lead. And in the first half, Auburn was not shooting the basketball from long range real well. They were 3 for 10 at the half. 
They've almost gone away from that strategy right now. Cliff Ellis has them looking down low, and I think it's smart basketball. They've worked their way into this lead primarily because they've been patient enough not to just settle for an outside shot when they can get that pretty much whenever you want in this game. Aggressive play in the second half for Auburn. Killingsworth with 11 points, 8 rebounds. Auburn's answering that question if they belong in this tournament. Gray nearly lost it. Little guy inside, and it's left by Robinson. I'm not so sure Robinson even left his feet just then, Ian. Here's Monroe motoring. Oh, oh, Pass away by Howard. Here's Howard the other way. Ball stripped by Watson for a moment. Cross court. Gray had the shooting touch in the first half. A three. Way off for the freshman. And tracked down in the corner by Watson. Auburn leads by two. Monroe crosses over. Robinson, toe on the line, no good. Bird able to keep his footing alive as he comes across the lane in an offensive rebound. Bird actually rolled over on his ankle there, came very, very close to traveling, but held his ground and then was able to push the ball through the middle. Take down. Monroe tripped up by Howard. That's number four on the All-American. And it's decision time for Skip Prosser right now. A little over five minutes to go. What do you do? He just waved off Prosser, and Prosser's insisting that he's going to the bench. Well, clearly it's a tripping foul. There's no question about it. I love the decision by Skip Prosser. I love the fact that Howard tried to wave him off because that shows you he has heart and stomach to play in this game. But it's more important right now to have him on the floor with two and a half, three minutes left. Let him settle down. Let him take a quick break. You get a timeout in a minute or so. Then you reinsert him in the basketball game. So good coaching from the sidelines. Monroe, a 70% free throw shooter. Tuesday on CBS, join superstar Celine Dion for a spectacular all-new live special. Justin Timberlake is the host. Celine in Las Vegas, opening night live Tuesday on CBS, America's most watched network. And Monroe, able to hit on a pair, now has eight points. Five minutes to go. Keep in mind, Howard exits with his team down by four. We'll see what Wake does with Howard on the bench. And a young team on the floor also right now. Knocked away from Dataloos by Killingsworth. And Skip Prosser is going to have to go back with his guys in foul trouble quicker than what he wants. If you're leading right now, you have the luxury. You're losing. You can't take too much time off the clock. Killingsworth against Dataloos. Nice catch. Robinson, the Good delivery also from up high. The high-low working well for Auburn. They're really trying to pack this thing and turn this into a 12-foot basketball game. And the Tigers have their largest lead of the game. 57 to 51. The 10th seeded Auburn Tigers in front of Wake. What is it? This is a business reality detector. It sniffs out overpromises and exaggerations. Does it work? Try it. Keeney, what's up with the supply chain overhaul? Everything's on schedule. <laughs> Fuller, how's the wireless thing going? Under budget. Bill, what do you think? I don't think. I'm just a yes man. Works. Auburn 57, Wake Forest 51. And that's enough rest for Josh Howard. Skip Prosser sensing that this one could get away in a hurry. Brings Howard back on the floor with four fouls. Because if you look at the other side of the equation, Daniels is over there with four fouls, but Cliff Ellis has a lead right now, so he can stretch that and leave him over there until it gets a little nerve-wracking. A 13-3 run for the Tigers. Big, big possession right now. You want to make a good decision. Gray, a three. A run the ring. Oh, what a step up for a youngster. Under control, biding his time, and then just stroking away. A new career high for the freshman, Justin Gray. He's got 21. And it keeps the door open, too. A miss right there would have really put Wake in problem. Monroe trying to counter. Cannot. Air ball. Killingsworth is out of bounds. A timeout with 3.43 left. Here in Tampa, Auburn leads by three.
Bacardi Silver Premium Malt Beverage. 5% alcohol by volume. Yeah. Here now you just got more interesting. Now with a splash of orange. Okay, let's say this is your car and you get into an accident. Oh boy. If you take it to an Allstate recommended repair shop, they'll fix it. So you're pretty happy. You're like, ooh, I'm pretty happy. Even better, Allstate guarantees the workmanship for as long as you own the car, which means if even the smallest thing goes wrong, you don't have to pay for it. So you're still happy. You're like, ooh, I'm still happy. So there you go, the Allstate lifetime repair guarantee. Call now and find out how you're in good hands with Allstate. What is it? This is a business reality detector. It sniffs out overpromises and exaggerations. Does it work? Try it. Keeney, what's up with the supply chain overhaul? Everything's on schedule. Fuller, how's the wireless thing going? Under budget. Bill, what do you think? I don't think. I'm just a yes man. It works. Until the very end, we'll be there. When you serve billions of farm fresh eggs and billions of cups of coffee made with some of the world's finest beans and billions of biscuits made with real buttermilk. Egg McMuffin, hash brown, and a large coffee, right? Right. You're bound to have billions of regulars. Wake Forest led this one by as many as nine in the first half. But Jim Spinarkle, you never felt that they had control of this game. And Auburn has come back to take a three-point lead. And their leader, Marquise Daniels, is back on the floor playing with four fouls. And one of the things about it with Auburn is that they really wanted this to be a statement for them this afternoon. There were question marks as to whether they belonged, but these guys have been using that as a motivation to play tough, solid basketball. And they've been doing it, especially the front line when they need to, especially at the offensive end in the second half. Three-point differential. Danilus catches in the corner. Levy, they'll give him the three for the tie. Off the back of the rim. And rebounded by Howard. Good job by Danilus to keep that up. Downey swings it. Levy can't handle it. Comes down with it. And a jump ball. Possession arrow to Auburn. This week, catch the Emmy Award-winning Late Show with David Letterman. The biggest stars, the biggest laughs, and the biggest events are all on Dave. The Late Show with David Letterman right here on CBS, America's most watched network. 16th Wake Forest turnover here today. And Skip Frosser's team trailing 57-54. to 54. Both Daniels and Howard are playing with four personal fouls. So important, once again. Just about three minutes left in a tight game. Decisions are so important. Lack of turnovers, but making sure you get more percentage shots going towards the basket and getting it to the blocks and just settling for outside jumpers. Tigers have time to work with 12 to shoot. Daniels against Levy. Daniels splits defenders. Loses the ball out of bounds and an Auburn turnover. How about Gray defensively, too, just then. I think he got a hand in there to make that trip a little difficult for Daniels. With Ellis' squad just hanging on. Three-point lead. Twelfth time the Tigers have turned it over here today. Eight in the second half. Two, 34 left. On the outside, Downing. Danilus, a three. Off the rim. And it's rebounded by Daniels. Wake now searching on the offensive end. And a team that rebounds so well, Wake Forest. A one and done just then because the Tigers came up huge off the defensive class. Four guys underneath blocking out. We approach two minutes to play here in Tampa. Well, Howard has to be careful when Davis catches the basketball. He just took a swipe at the ball and hit a little bit of the arm that went undetected. Daniels hit some big shots in the first round victory. 
over St. Joseph's in overtime. Monroe looking for an opening. The leaner. Fed shot. No. Davis throws it up. Rebound action. And controlled by Daniels for the deuce. Now Daniels was a factor in the late stages of the St. Joseph's games. He's starting to reappear now. And a foul called on the outside against Brandon Robinson. As Gray was handling the basketball. And Davis is hurt for Auburn. Kyle Davis after throwing that ball up in the air. Looked like he came down awkwardly. Actually a pretty smart play on his behalf also because he recognized that he was going to be called for a violation, a traveling violation, and he just decided to give the thing a little heave-ho towards the glass. Fourth foul against Robinson as Gray hits the free throw. Marco Killingsworth will check back in, and they're going to have to take a look at Kyle Davis, the junior from Blakely, Georgia. Right down to the ankle area, left ankle. Gray, second attempt. He converts both. 59-56, Auburn. And Wake Forest will extend full court right now. Pretty good decision. Try to make something happen at the defensive end. 140 left to play, second half. Winner goes to Albany, New York. Syracuse has already advanced to the Sweet 16. They'll take on the survivor here. Backcourt pretty good with the basketball, in particular Monroe. Only had one turnover in 41 minutes. Auburn up three. Daniels, reverse delivery. Boy, you can almost see it in his body that when he came back on the floor, he knows it's his time to step up. And boy, did he ever go to the reverse side there to avoid the block shot. 15 for Daniels. Auburn up by five. Spin move. Gray, left hand, doesn't go. Knocked out of bounds by Howard with 106 to play. Watch the reverse. You know somebody's going after it. Howard trying to get it on the left side of the floor, take it to the right, and avoid the clock. Auburn with a minute two on the clock. And the Tigers beginning to taste it. Daniels is fouled in the backcourt. A little under 70% on the season for Cliff Ellis' squad, 68% to be exact. Fourth foul on Jamal Levy. And Davis will check back in for Auburn. He will hobble back in also because he's still feeling the effects of that left ankle. Marquise Daniels, 15 points. He is hit on his only free throw. That one is good. Hit a huge shot from three-point land with six seconds left against St. Joe's. In the overtime, he was spectacular going to the slashing-type moves that we just saw along the baseline. Second one off the mark. Let's see if Wake Forest now down six. But go to the basket. Don't settle. If it was an opening. Gray had it knocked back. Here's Downey. Three-pointer. No good. Levy battling for it. Did he get the timeout? He might have been on the ground beforehand. Yes, he was. It's going to go the other way. And Wake Forest is running out of chances. 49.3 remaining. Auburn 62, Wake Forest from the ACC, the number two seed in the East, 56, 49.3 left to go. Wake has missed 14 of its last 16 shots from the field, and they're forced to foul Daniels. And Daniels just wants the basketball. He's willing, even after a miss at the line, the last trip, a one-for-two trip, willing to go track the basketball down. He wants it. He wants this game on his shoulders. Levy is fifth foul. He is done for the day. And Daniels is going to the free throw line with his team up by six. Steve Lafour checks into the game, the senior from North Olmsted, Ohio. Double bonus for both teams. Daniels, 68% on the season. Hits the first. Davis returns for Auburn for defensive purposes. See the game reset. Auburn with a 63-56 advantage. Their largest lead of the day, and Daniels adds to it. Plus three possession game right now, so Wake really has to come down and let them fly in a hurry. 40 seconds left. Daniels has 18 points. Wake Forest running out of time. Here's Gray with 33 seconds to go, a three. He cans it. And a quick timeout for Skip Prosser. 
26 points, a career high for Gray. But Wake trails by five. I take good care of the lawn, I do. Do you bag or mulch? Man, this party needs help. Better music. I'm a mulcher. A better host. So, guy goes into a bar. And a better chip <laughs> that doesn't break. Introducing new Tostitos Gold, a whole new kind of Tostitos made extra thick for hearty dips with an authentic Mexican taste. New Tostitos Gold, the perfect chip for hearty dips. Bag? I mulch. Wake Forest came in as the ACC regular season champions. First time they've won that title since 1962. One of the biggest surprises in college basketball this year. But right now, they are in a five-point hole. Howard is not on the floor because they're going to have to foul quickly if they don't get a steal. And they almost did. Robinson able to handle it. Out of bounds. And an Auburn turnover. Not only could he not handle that lob pass, but he had it to deflect it to try to get it going towards his floor. I believe it was Strickland who was tracking him down. Still enough time for Wake Forest here. Only 30 seconds remain approximately. Look at the dangerous lob pass. And yes, it's Strickland going after the basketball. Robinson trying to keep it away from him. Howard back on the floor for Wake. Just under 30 seconds to go. There's a seam. Go towards the basket. Dattelou stripped to the ball by Davis. What a defensive play. And he's limping across the midcourt line. And Davis has been in the game only at the defensive end. Cliff Ellis has been doing a defensive, offensive substitution pattern with him. Skip Prosser knows that that one was a possession. They needed to get a shot up. And here's Davis getting the basketball. And you look at the foul in the backcourt, and that's exactly what Wake Forest has to do. Now it comes down to shooting free throws. Monroe, 70% free throw shooter. Eight points today. Make it nine. 65-59 Auburn. 25.8 remaining. The Tigers, 21-11 and 11 this season. Eight and eight in the SEC. Those that didn't believe they would even get an invitation to the NCAA tournament. And they are 23 seconds away from going to the Sweet 16. Lapore, long three, off the rim, no. Davis for rebound, but he loses it. Downey gets it with 15 seconds left. Quick three for him. It's good. That keeps him alive. There's 13 seconds to go. But just barely. 66-62, Auburn. Well, 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 what have we got here? In basic, everyone tells a different story. What happened out there? Wait, don't say it. I'll tell you. But there's nothing more shocking. I know who you are. Than the truth. They're dead, aren't they? It's not like that. It's not. Basic is a thrill ride with a twist you won't believe. Seductive oh. and electrifying with non-stop action. Am I scratching your surface yet? Ah. John Travolta, Connie Nielsen, and Samuel L. Jackson. What are you doing? See what happens when you lie? Basic. Rated R. Opens everywhere Friday. Come on, Jason. Come on in. Come on, it's like bath water. C come on, it's not that bad. You don't want to come in with your dad? Come on in. You're not going to come in, huh? Come on. Just one foot on the edge. Now give me two feet. Give me two. Come on in. Come on. Roll around a little bit. Oh, Jake, you had it. Oh. Tell you what, you jump in, and we all go to McDonald's. Huh? <laughs> Wake Forest is now out of timeouts with 13.1 remaining, and Auburn owning a 66-62 lead over the number two seed in the East. And the only choice Wake Forest has right now is to go for a very fast steal on the inbounds pass and then immediately foul. Don't take any time off the clock. Let's see if they can execute defensively. Daniels fires it near midcourt. Monroe ahead. Whoa. Killingsworth, the catch, and the reverse slam. A foul was called. Gray got there just in the nick of time. So that would basket have, waved off. Right, that would have been game, set, match just then, if not for that foul. They still, as you mentioned, are breathing slightly. But if you go to the free throw line and you hit your free throws, all the strategies that Wake Forest is trying with the fouling game right now go out the window. Lewis Monroe, a sophomore from Madison, Wisconsin. 70% free throw shooter. Auburn up by five. The Tigers are now 15 of 17 from the free throw line. No number 
two seed has been knocked out of this year's tournament so far. Arizona, a number one seed, had a heck of a scare last night at the hands of Gonzaga. Double overtime. Just a fabulous game last night. Six-point lead. Uh, good decision to pull that out because the clock is on your side. And it is just about over. 7.3 remaining. And the celebration begins for the Auburn Tigers. Who said Auburn didn't belong in the NCAA tournament? Well, guess what? They are advancing, and they're advancing with some confidence as a group because the confidence has grown all afternoon in this basketball game. Daniels, a smile on his face, doesn't get the roll on the first attempt. All right, I think the telling line is the amount of free throws they shot in the second half versus the first. They went to the line only four times, hitting three in the first half. Cliff Ellis changed the entire strategy for them and said, listen, guys, we're going to win. we got to go down low. End of a career for Josh Howard, four-year starter for Wake and a player of the year candidate in the nation. Gray, a three. And time has run out. The 10th seeded Auburn Tigers in the East have pulled off the upset against number two Wake Forest. And the Tigers can book their flights to Albany, New York. The Sweet 16 in a matchup with Syracuse. Auburn advances. They'll match up with the Orangemen, the number three seed in the East. Chevrolet players of the game. Daniels for Auburn with 18. Gray, a career-high 26 in a losing effort for Wake. 68-62 the final. Auburn wins it. Let's go to New York and Greg Gumbel.